subject matter. So, <clears throat> and then to, uh, to emphasize that uh, this is not the speech of any human being, especially not the speech of the Prophet Muhammad, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is throwing a challenge, is challenging, uh, if, uh, if you have any doubt that this is from God, then produce, produce like it. Even one, one chapter, one surah. Now imagine there is a, a certain surah which are only only three uh, verses in it, or four verses in it, like inna uh, mataina kal This is uh, only this is a wal asr or surah al ikhlas like kulhu Allah Four or five chapters. This uh, the easiest way for the enemies of Islam to destroy Prophet claim that the Qur'an is from God was to produce something uh, or take up this challenge and produce something uh, which will be recognized by everyone that it is comparable to the Qur'an. So the, you know, there were uh, all the Quraysh, they started calling the Prophet, you know, this, that, he's a liar, he's a crazy guy, he's this and that, and he's persecuting his followers, uh, fighting him battling him and so on. Instead of all that, if he had just produced uh, a few verses some similar to the Qur'an, uh, then uh, if, you know, it could have, if the challenge would have been taken. So it shows that uh, they were incapable of it. The challenge still stands. The Arabic language is still there. The uh, you know, great scholars and uh, great uh, fusaha, that is, uh, poets and writers and all kind of people. But it is not just the uh, language, it is the content of the Qur'an. Now, if you say, if the Qur'an says, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ اللَّهُ السَّمَانِ لَمْ يَلِدْ وَلَمْ يُولَدْ وَلَمْ يَكُلْ لَهُ كُفُوًا أَحَدْ God is one, that He is eternal, He is self-sufficient, He was not born, but and He didn't, He was not begotten, or not to be guest not. And there is nothing comparable to him. Now, somebody will have to make these, uh, uh, this kind of a statement unless he, he, he has this knowledge. He has knowledge that God is one and that he's, he's eternal, he's self sufficient, that he was not begotten. Now, at that time, there was uh, the whole world, you know, was full of thinking of uh, gods and goddesses, the, the polytheism, and even. Uh, Christianity had a, you know, that Christ Jesus was the Son of God. So, how could uh, anybody compose anything like the Quran uh, if they have no such knowledge? So, this knowledge which is coming in the Quran is purely from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so, no human being, this a challenge cannot be taken by any human being, or, uh, or even it says all the jinns and the, and the human beings. Uh, all may help each other, but they could not produce a single surah of the Qur'an. So this is a, one of the uh, standing challenge of the Qur'an and uh, to refute the claim of the Prophet that he revealed, uh, he, was, he, was, he received the Qur'an from God was to take up this challenge and, uh, uh, <coughs> and you know, but nobody uh, has taken it as a challenge. Uh, they, some of them tried, but you know, there was uh, nobody uh, agreed that there is anything comparable to it. Now, what is the purpose of the Quran? The purpose of the Quran is, uh, is to guide human beings, is a guidance human being, uh, that is, to, uh, to bring human beings to the sovereignty of their Creator, to worship Him alone, and to, li to live a life 
uh, which is uh, revealed by God to be a uh, righteous life, to be uh, to be the life, uh, the life which is suitable for human beings, which is uh, guides to piety, guides to guide to a righteous action, and it defines what uh, what is permissible, what is not permissible, what is obligatory, what is uh, haram, what is uh, prohibited, what is beneficial to human beings, what is harmful to human beings. So it lays down a certain uh, uh, rules and of uh, living a life which uh, which will be which is called uh, uh, fil hasanat fil dunya hasanat fil akhirah that is which will guarantee that uh, peace and prosperity in this life and peace and prosperity prosperity in the next life. So the purpose of the Quran is basically to inform human being about the existence, about the sovereignty of God in the in the in the universe, and it also in human affairs, and to guide them uh, to the uh, to the right path. But now, now, why is it necessary? Why is it necessary that human beings uh, have to be guided? Uh, what is good and what is bad? Can the can the science and the kind of human intellect? Enough to uh, uh, to provide what is uh, what is good and what is bad. Uh, you can uh, you can study uh, philosophy. You can study all the legislation, human legislation, and you see that how uh, ten years ago something was considered good or bad, and then today it is uh, the opposite of it. Just a few years ago, uh, for example, uh, in the uh, 50s or 60s, 1950s, 1960s, the uh, homosexuality was completely frowned upon in this country. And now it is uh, acceptable. Now, similarly, drinking, it was uh, considered to be very harmful to human beings. Even scientifically, articles were written down. So, in fact, in 1918, it was uh, prohibited. Now everybody drinks, even marijuana and so on. So you see, human beings themselves, uh, they are not their creator. You know, they, they, we have not created ourselves. So God has not given us the power to decide what is good, what is harmful. It is something like, uh, you know, we, uh, our product is, for example, a car. So we know uh, that a certain key, for example, a certain key is for ignition, uh, another so if you use that key, ignition key into the door, you are going to, it will not going to work, but in fact it, the key will not be broken. So similarly, Allah is the, God is the creator of human being. He has created human nature. He has created our intellect, uh, all of our, uh, uh, and he has placed us in this, in this uh, world. So he knows, uh, you know, he knows total human being and the total uh, environment for him. So only he can, uh, uh, he can describe what is, uh, you know, what is good, what is bad, what is evil and what is, uh, uh, what is uh, not evil. So only God can decide and that is one of the main purpose of the Quran, of course, is, uh, you know, besides uh, emphasizing the unity of Allah, the worship of Allah alone, is to prescribe certain rules and regulations. Now the question is, uh, uh, who uh, who can benefit the Quran? But, uh, this again, the Quran itself describes who can benefit. What are the prerequisites for benefit, benefiting from the Quran? Is it possible for someone to just pick it up and start reading and benefiting from the Quran? Now, uh, in fact, it says. Uh, there are certain prerequisites for uh, benefiting from the Quran. It says uh, in the in the second surah, in the beginning, you know, so it describes who can benefit. It says, "Alikal kitab la la raiba fiye udallil muttaqin." This is the book in which there is no doubt, and it is a guidance uh, to the to the God-fearing, those who already uh, have some. 
notion, some idea, some faith that God is directing this and not uh, that human being can decide. So a person who does not believe in God, a person who is a person uh, who is uh, not uh, inclined toward uh, good actions, the Quran says it will not guide him. It will in fact maybe make him more uh, uh, obstinate and more arrogant. So, and who are these muttaqeen? Says, الَّذِينَ يُمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ وَيُقِنُونَ الصَّلَاةِ وَمِمَّا رَدَقْتَهُمْ يَنْفِقُونَ First of all, there is iman bil ghayb. Now, what is ghayb? Ghayb is something which is not observable to human beings. Okay? Uh, uh, I can give an example uh, like uh, the his historical events. You know, for us, they are for ghayb. For example, if somebody says there was a person named Napoleon, uh, that's a great for me, unless it's uh, information is coming from other sources, from other human beings. Similarly, Ghaib is like uh, idea, my ideas. My ideas are entirely Ghaib to any other human being. Uh, no matter how, how they can uh, experiment, uh, they may open my, <laughs> my skull and try to find out what my idea is, that they cannot find it unless I communicate myself. But uh, here, Ghaib means the, uh, the events, the people, uh, the, uh, you know, the, the create, creations, and Allah himself is Ghaib, that is unobservable to human being. The angels, the life hereafter, uh, how, how could we, uh, through any means, scientific method or speculation, know about God, know about the hereafter, that there, that after death uh, there will be a day of judgment, we will be resurrected, we will be brought forth. So these are matters of uh, ghaib, that is human beings cannot know them without, with their own experiments or with their own uh, speculation unless God himself informs them uh, their existence. So the the prerequisite for guiding of the Qur'an is to have, first of all, the faith in Allah, and then to faith the possibility that uh, Allah, is, God, is informing us about the unseen realities which we cannot discover in ourselves. And after that, we uh, try to follow the guidance which has been coming through the Qur'an, so that is where establishing prayers and uh, spending money for charity or uh, believing in the prophets and so on. These earlier revelations, uh, or, uh, these things are necessary to benefit from the Quran. A person who is already rejecting the possibility of revelation, rejecting uh, the belief in God and, and the uh, hereafter, he is not going to benefit. In fact, it says later, "Inna ladina kafaru sabaun alayhim a andartum am lam tindirhum la yumenu." Hatam Allahu ala qulubim wa ala samayhim wa ala absarhim bishawa wa lahum adabun adim. In fact, those who disbelieve in the possibility of revelation, they are. Uh, not going to be uh, accepting this message whether you warn them or you do not warn them. This is useless. Somebody who is insisting that he will not change my mind, will not change uh, my mind, you know, he will not change my mind. Even if you, if you bring a proof directly, if you bring, a, uh, if you bring the, uh, bring uh, the, the book from, from up, upstairs, if you bring the angels I'm not going to believe it. No, if they are in that frame of mind, then uh, it is useless whether you warn them or you don't warn them. So this is, the benefit of the Qur'an is only for those who come with a frame of mind of accepting the guidance and accepting the revelation and the possibility of revelation and who believe in the truthfulness of the Prophet. Uh, <laughs> I have uh, uh, 
described, you know, the, uh, uh, one, one more thing I would like to say about the Quran, and that is, it is not like any other book. You know, you, you open a book on statistics, so it first starts, what is the definition of statistics, chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, it is not like that. The Quran is a, a book in the sense that it is collected in a book form, but the uh, the message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is, it is similar to say God's nature. You know? so, <clears throat> if, you, if you go to the mountain, if you go to the Allah's creation, look at Allah's creation, you see a, a, a rock here and a lake there and trees here and so on and so forth. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is creator of everything. He's not making a park, a little park. We human beings make a park. So we have a little arbor here. We have a row of trees here. We have some rocks from water falling. But in Allah's nature, for Allah's nature, it is not not uh, organized like uh, like a uh, like a park, you know. So similarly, the the book, the Quran, is book of Allah. It is just like nature. So Allah can say anything, anything concerning any subject, and it will be true. So this is description. Uh, people are uh, you know uh, kind of. Uh, upset that why is the Quran not like a book written by human being because this is not written by human being this is Allah which has written <laughs>